What is up? We're doing a disassembly on this knife right here today. This is the Cultratec Cornet. And honestly, it doesn't really need it at all. It's pretty much perfect. It's just, I'm kind of curious just to see the inside of it and um, should be pretty cool to see. So let's go ahead and disassemble this guy. We have a T8 screw and we have a proprietary pivot, but they do actually include the pivot tool. And I already kind of tried to loosen this beforehand and it's quite tight, but it is actually tooled for some sort of hex. So um, I'm kind of hoping I'll be able to get it with this and we'll see, but um, let's kind of pop it on there. There we go, it's in place. It's made out of brass so that way it doesn't mar up the titanium. Oh, there we go, okay, we're loose. Good to go, perfect. All right, so there's that little guy. Interesting setup. And then here is the T8, boom, beautiful. All right, looks like it's gonna come right apart. And look at the extensive milling. This is already extremely, extremely thin titanium, and there's plenty of machining on the outside, but then there's also still plenty of internal milling as well. Really nice looking. In Lock bar insert, we have lock bar uh, over travel stop on there, and then you have your interface for the lock. Very, very nice. And then here is the backspacer, also very, very nice. And then here's the part that had me very interested right here. This is attached still very well, very tight to the pivot. But like I mentioned, it has actually cartridge bearings. I don't know if it's like one single bearing or if it's like like twin, like dual row, but yeah, that is kind of the setup. And that is not something you see a whole lot of in knives at all, so that's pretty darn cool. And then here's your stop pin right there. It's actually hollow stop pin, so I guess maybe it reduces as much weight as possible because even though this knife is pretty darn close to being a four inch blade it's actually pretty lightweight still so very very cool and then the screw the body screw is actually a integrated um off uh wow standoff like the standoff is kind of built into the screw and it screws directly into the titanium which honestly it's not like super ideal because there is there is the chance of being able to um, kind of strip out that titanium, but as long as you're not over torquing it, which you really shouldn't be doing anyways, it should be perfectly fine. So here is the internal milling on this side, very nice. And here is the pivot. So pretty simple setup really. You don't even really need to put any lubrication on any of this because like I said, the bearings are self-contained. If anything, we could put a little teeny tiny bit of lube on the the detent track. So that's probably what we'll do. But we'll go ahead and give this a quick cleaning, even though it it's very clean already. It doesn't really need it. But let's go ahead and do that. Very simple, yet very intricate at the same time. I like it. Let's do the show side scale here. Clean it all out. This little swatch will probably still be clean by the time I finish cleaning all the parts. But yeah, and then of course there's like a little, the like the little pin locator pin for the backspacer is actually part of the show side scale. So very like minimal in the it's tiny parts and whatnot. So yeah, it kind of just blocks right in there. Pretty cool. I dig it. I am all about simplicity personally. So, and then it also has one on this side as well. Very cool. I like it. I'm into it. This looks to have a ceramic ball for the detent. And there's our track for the stop pin. Yeah, just super simple. And like I mentioned, this is still pretty much perfectly clean. Let's clean off the mirror stone washed bevel here. And because that it's not quite a full-blown mirror blade, it's not something that I'm afraid to use because it does already have that stone wash in there. So it, it kind of already does look used a little bit. So you're not afraid of messing up the finish, really. 
and oh yeah, I was wanting to take a look at how this works, like this little notch. So yeah, that's super interesting. So it kind of just tucks in there. That is pretty cool. So it kind of tucks in in this little notch right there. So that's pretty darn cool, actually. Um, the one thought was that it would maybe not allow for, you know, wear in over time because, you know, it'll kind of work its way down the lock bar interface. But we're talking like literal decades because like all, all my titanium knives that I've ever owned, I've never seen the lock bar like slowly work its way down the down the interface of the blade. But I'm, I'm sure it happens, but it's we're talking like a long, long time before any of that stuff sort of happens. So. All right, we're ready to reassemble here. We have the backspacer on there. Backspacer, set that on there. Let's put the blade on there. There's no need for lubrication at all. Got to kind of very carefully. There we go. I'm into that setup. That's very cool. And like I mentioned, we're going to put just a teeny tiny, try not to overdo it, just a little bit. As much as I love the design of the backspacer, I'm kind of finding that even though that's really awesome, uh, it is a little bit finicky to reassemble, but I think we'll be all right. So we'll just kind of right here in the middle of the track, we'll kind of just put a little, a little bit right there. Even though I believe ceramic is actually a self-lubricating material, there's really no need to have lube on a ceramic ball, but, um, you know, whatever. It'll be fine. <laughs> so, there we go. Put the backspacer back on and put the show side scale on. There we go. And just to kind of hold it all together, let's pop that in there. So I'm not about to wrestle with that backspacer. So we'll kind of just, you know, get it most of the way there. Not going to quite tighten it down yet. And we'll kind of slip this guy on here. And then because this is cartridge style bearing, honestly, there's almost no way to really over tighten it. So because it will stop at that. The, the outer race portion. So just I'll give it a quick little nice firm snug on there and then we will or dead center as you'd expect. And try I, I, I'm sure I've been kind of holding it off the screen a little bit. I've, I've, I'm trying to be good about it, but sometimes it's hard to avoid so. And then we'll snug that down. So that is pretty much it. Super simple. Drop shutty as ever. Dead center. Yeah, so really cool design. I'm, I'm surprised we don't see more knife companies do that sort of thing. I think it's pretty darn awesome. But yeah, pretty darn perfect. I am loving this knife so far. Um, it is just ultimate knife it's super thin like in the handle even though it has pretty thick blade stock i think the the handle is like 0.43 inches thick overall so it's super thin especially for how tall and how big it is like i mentioned it's like almost like a it's like a 3.75 inch blade or something like that i love it i love the tucked away flipper tab so you can choke up super super sharp blade i've been kind of using this i've been taking it to work and using it and yeah it's awesome so Really cool knife. I believe there might be still one or two available on the hollowgrind.com if anyone is interested. It does come with a pretty st steep price tag, but overall, now that I find kind of finally have it in hand, I'm kind of slurring my words. Now that I finally have it in hand, I can actually say that it was money well spent. Pretty darn awesome. So yeah, but that, that's all I have for you for today. Have a good one.